Good afternoon, friends. Welcome back to Stories with Pastor Macy. Yesterday got busy and I completely forgot that we were supposed to finish off the second part of a wolf story. So we've read a couple of stories out of this book, Wolf, uh, eight best-selling children's stories in one volume by Danae Dobson. And today we are finishing up the story, Wolf and the Haunted House. So Woof is a lovable mutt with one crooked ear who has been adopted by the Peterson family, Mark and Chrissy. And in our story so far, they have gone to explore a scary mansion that the kids tell stories about. And Woof is barking. And when we left, Woof was upstairs. The kids and their friend Barry were downstairs. And Chrissy screamed. One of the old boards had given way, trapping Chrissy's foot inside the stair. Help me, she cried. Mark grabbed her by the hand. It's all right, he assured her. We'll get you out. After several tugs, Mark and Barney managed to loosen Chrissy's foot. Tears were streaming down her face, but she had only scraped her ankle. The children started up the stairs again, being careful about where they stepped this time. When they reached the top, Mark aimed the flashlight down the dark hallway. They could still hear Wolf barking in one of the rooms. Here, boy, Mark called. He called again, but Wolf just kept barking and barking. Finally, the children reached the room where the dog was. Their hearts pounded like big bass drums as they peered inside, ready to run for safety at any moment. Wolf was barking angrily at the closet door. Chrissy grabbed her brother's arm. Something's in that closet, she exclaimed. Barney was shaking, shaking so much he could barely keep his balance. Suddenly, a very loud crash came from inside the closet and the door flew open. All three children screamed and jumped at the same time. They turned and ran toward the stairs. Get me out of here! Barney shouted. Wolf came tearing past the children on the stairs and darted out the opening. The three kids scrambled for the exit too, all trying to get out at once. They didn't want to know who or what was chasing Wolf. They ran like the wind down Pine Street with Barney leading the way. Their hearts were beating wildly and sweat was dripping down their faces as they reached the driveway of the Peterson home. Wolf had taken a shortcut and was already barking at the front door. Mr. and Mrs. Peterson were startled as the three children and Wolf came, looking, came running into their house looking very frightened. Everyone began talking at once as the children tried to explain what had happened. Wait a minute, Father interrupted. One at a time, please. Mark began telling how the Wilson house was haunted. Chrissy and Barney told about the big crash that had come from inside the closet. Even Wolf was barking as loudly as he could. After the children finished talking, Mr. Peterson called two neighbors to go with him to investigate the old house. While they were gone, Mother tried to comfort the children, who were still very upset. Wolf seemed just as uneasy as he lay on his blanket, whimpering softly. An hour later, Mr. Peterson returned. The children jumped up to meet him at the door. What happened? asked Mark. Mr. Peterson smiled and said, I think we solved the mystery of your haunted house. Let's sit down and I'll tell you all about it. The children sat on the edge of their seats and listened closely as Mark and Chrissy's father talked. It looks as if a big yellow cat was snooping around the house and got trapped in the closet. Wolf's barking must have frightened him, so he darted out of there and ran outside. We found him at the top of a nearby elm tree. The children were greatly relieved. I'm so glad the house isn't really haunted like everyone thinks, Chrissy said. Me too, Barney added. I thought we were all going to die in there. Everyone laughed about being frightened by a cat. Now wait a minute, said father. There's my dog barking in the background. Now wait a minute, Father said. I hope you kids learned a valuable lesson from this experience. Exploring that old house was not smart. Someone could have gotten hurt. 
They knew how fortunate Chrissy was that her accident on the staircase wasn't worse than it was. The children nodded in agreement. What we did was wrong, and we're sorry, Mark added, but we're thankful God protected us anyway. The next morning, Mr. Peterson took the children to a museum. They had fun looking at the old things on display. While they were there, they looked at pictures and read books about Mr. Wilson. The children learned many things about him that were different from the bad stories that they had heard. They found out that he was a good man who had given away a lot of money to help others. Weren't any of those awful true stories true? asked Chrissy. No, replied father. Mr. Wilson was a fine Christian gentleman. He just lived longer than his family and his friends. Because he was old and lonely, he seemed much different from the way he really was. Later that day, Father got out the Bible and read from the book of James. You see, children, he began, gossip can be a dangerous thing. Many people have been hurt by stories about them that weren't true. In James chapter 3, we read, Those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. Father continued, The tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. Just like with Mr. Wilson, Chrissy said, someone made that scary story up about him and his house, and soon the whole town believed it. That's right, said Mr. Peterson. We should always be careful not to believe rumors, and we should not repeat them to others. I'm sure I would have liked Mr. Wilson, Mark said. Me too, said Chrissy. He wasn't at all like I heard. He might even have liked Wolf, said Mark, stroking the fur on his dog's head. Mr. Pro Peterson smiled. He probably would have. He said, in fact, I'm sure he would have liked Wolf. Doesn't everybody? These stories in this book end with a wonderful page that has discussion questions. So let's read some of those. When Wolf was barking at the closet, what was inside? When the closet door flew open, was Wolf afraid? Was there a good reason to be afraid? What should you do if you hear a bad story about someone? Should you believe it? Should you repeat the story to others? When you're tempted to gossip about someone, what does God want you to do instead? Psalm 1914 says, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord. And then our story ends with a little prayer that goes along with it. So we're going to read that prayer. Dear God, help me to be careful about what I say in front of others and help me to watch what I think about too. Let everything I think, say, and do be pleasing to you. And then it leaves blanks for us to insert what we want to into the prayer. I want to pray for blank. Thank you for blank. I love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have enjoyed part two of Wolf and the Haunted House, and I hope to see you soon. We're having church tomorrow. It's a little different because of masks and social distancing, but 1030 in the morning at the Tabernacle Church. I would love to see you, even if it's just from across the parking lot. We'll also be on Facebook Live on our uh, Facebook page and then uploading it to our YouTube channel later. So if you want to join us online, you can also do that. I hope to see you soon, either in person or uh, via social media. Have a wonderful Friday and a blessed weekend.